everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I hope your new year has gotten off to a fantastic start. Uh, mine's gotten off to a pretty good start and I am back in the kitchen working on some new recipes for uh, you to enjoy. So today we are going to be making pho vegetable broth. So for those of you who are not familiar with pho, pho is a Vietnamese noodle soup and pho really refers to the noodle part, but we're gonna be making a delicious vegetable stock um, for ours. Now, traditional pho does use some meat bones to make their stock, but we're gonna make ours all vegetarian. Uh, from time to time, you guys message me and request vegetarian recipes, so I thought that this would be a good time to give this one a try. The flavor profile um, is still the same as traditional pho as far as the spices go. Um, it's very, it has a very similar flavor profile. We're just leaving the meat part out and we're gonna make it all vegetarian. Now this recipe comes from the Ball Fresh Preserving website. The instructions from Ball um, are to freeze it. I think that that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, not that it's unsafe to can, and I'm going to include canning instructions for you in the description box below. I'm not necessarily gonna show uh, the canning process. I have a number of videos about canning stock, um, but I will make sure that the uh, instructions are linked for you. Um, but they do suggest freezing it, and I think part of that reason is to preserve the freshness of the stock. The uh, Pho is very fresh in flavor by nature, and I think canning it could maybe modify those that flavor profile just a little bit. So we are going to, I'm gonna talk about freezing mine. That's what I'm going to do for preserving mine is freeze it. But it is going to be safe for canning, and I will leave the instructions for you below. That being said, there is an ingredient that Ball does include that gives me pause about canning it up if you are going to can it, I would leave it out. They do recommend using a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. I'm pretty sure that's not a safe canning ingredient, so if you did want to can this, um, I would leave that out. I don't usually use, I've never used, uh, nutritional yeast. Um, many of you may. I don't, so I, it's not something I keep on hand and I wasn't going to buy it just for this recipe. I did research it a bit and it's really just to add exactly what it says, some nutrition to the broth. So um, I'm going to leave that out altogether, but I will make sure that it is listed in the description box in case you want to include it. So the star of the show for pho stock is really the flavor profile. And you get that beautiful flavor from the delicious um, spices that they use. We're gonna be using coriander seed, star anise, a cinnamon stick, cardamom, and some cloves, as well as some garlic and ginger, lots of fresh ginger. Make sure you use fresh ginger for this. I would not recommend using powdered ginger here. They do say to use fresh ginger, and I, there's a reason for that. This soup by nature is, like I said, fresh uh, in flavor. So you want to make sure you use fresh ginger, also fresh garlic instead of granulated or powdered garlic. You could substitute them for powdered, but I would not. We really want to keep that fresh flavor here. We need some water. Um, I always use filtered water, but you use whatever appeals to you. We need an onion, Some. we need three stalks of celery, a large carrot chopped, a half a head of Napa cabbage. If you're not familiar, Napa cabbage is just a Chinese cabbage. You can find it very easily in your grocery store with the other regular green or purple cabbage that we're familiar with. Um, also some cilantro. Cilantro is traditional um, as a garnish and as a flavor in pho uh, noodle soup. So I highly recommend using it. I know some of you do not like cilantro. For some people, it can read as a soapy flavor. So if you don't groove on that, just leave it out. It's just to add flavor. So you can safely leave it out, not any problem. Two teaspoons of sugar. You can use brown sugar or white sugar. We need a tablespoon of soy sauce or tamari. I just use regular soy sauce. They also recommend using a tablespoon of salt. I cooked my stock first and then tasted it and then salted uh, to taste. So that is up to you. The soy sauce is gonna be salty, but depending on if you use reduced sodium or not. So I would cook it a little bit before you salt it, but that's just me. They do recommend using a tablespoon of salt. And then like I said, the quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. 
If you're gonna can it up, I would leave that ingredient out. So all we're gonna do is basically toast our spices, then add our water and all the rest of our ingredients. Let it simmer for about an hour, hour and a half. You want your veggies to be nice and soft, and then we're gonna strain it and then we can preserve it. So I'm gonna bring you in close, let's get started. All right, guys, we're gonna get started here. We are gonna start by toasting our delicious spices. So I have one tablespoon of coriander seeds, I have two star anise, two cardamom pods, hopefully you can see those okay, one whole clove. And that's going to go into our stock pot and we are going to toast them on low heat until they start to smell fragrant. It's gonna take about a minute. You wanna keep your spices moving the whole time. We don't want them to burn. We just want to lightly toast them. Once they start to smell fragrant, then we are going to add our garlic. I have six cloves of garlic that I've roughly chopped. And we're also gonna add three tablespoons of freshly grated ginger. And that's three tablespoons after you grate it. All right, we're gonna just move that around our pot for about 30 seconds. Everything should start to be smelling really yummy here. Next, we are going to add three quarts or 12 cups of water. I'm using filtered water. Give that a stir. And then we are going to start adding our other ingredients. I have one carrot that I've just roughly chopped. I have three stalks of celery that I've just roughly chopped as well into thirds. I have one onion that I've roughly chopped. Then I have my half a head of Napa cabbage. We're going to add a cup and a half of cilantro, stems and leaves. Um, I roughly chopped it and then lightly packed it to one, one and one half cups. We're gonna add two, one tablespoon of soy sauce. Also, I did forget the cinnamon stick. We do have half of a cinnamon stick that needs to go in there. That should have been toasted, but I missed him. And then we need two teaspoons of sugar. All right, we're going to bring this up to high. I'm gonna turn my temperature up to high. We're gonna bring it up to a boil. Then we're gonna lower our heat and gently simmer for about an hour until all of our veggies are nice and soft. Okay, so we are up to a boil now and I am going to reduce, I'm gonna give it a stir first. It smells so good already, you guys. This stuff is so amazing. I'm gonna give it a good stir and then I'm gonna reduce my heat to very low just so that it simmers. And I'm also going to put the lid back on. I want to retain all of my liquid or as much of it as possible. If you simmer it with the lid off, you're gonna have some evaporation and I don't want any of that. So we want the flavors to concentrate. We wanna keep all of our liquid. So I'm gonna keep the lid on. I'm going to lower it to a nice simmer and I'm gonna let it simmer for about an hour. Okay guys, so I let my stock simmer for about an hour and then I took the lid off my pot and I've let it cool. So now we're ready to strain it. So I just have another pot in my sink. I'm using a fine mesh strainer and I'm also going to add a layer of cheesecloth to the strainer. You don't wanna do this when your stock is super hot. You wanna let it cool a little bit. So now once it's fairly cool, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the strainer and strain out all of our solids. Look at that beautiful, rich stock. All right, guys, so that is it for making the stock. It is so rich and beautiful and it tastes absolutely amazing. I did end up adding almost a tablespoon of salt to mine. Like I said, I would taste it at the end to see how much you need. You can leave it out altogether and let people salt their own. That's entirely up to you, but that stock is just beautiful. Now, as far as preserving it, I did tell you that I was gonna leave instructions for canning it, and I will do that in the description box below, so make sure you look for that. I am going to freeze mine. I'm going to freeze mine in Ziploc freezer bags just because they lay flat and they are better for storing in my freezer, in my opinion. Um, not everyone would like that route, but just make sure if you are gonna freeze it, you use freezer bags, not storage bags. The other thing too, when you fill them, same as you would with uh, filling jars, you need room for expansion during freezing. So make sure you leave about an inch or so below the last um, seal 
leave an inch or so so you have room for expansion in your freezer. If you want to, you can freeze in ball mason jars. You can use the wide mouth jars uh, are safe for freezing. They do have on here a line, a fill line that says for freezing, fill to this line. Um, you can safely freeze in pint jars and in pint and a half jars, it is not recommended to freeze in quart jars. You can also freeze in the four ounce and eight ounce jars. So um, just don't do anything larger than a pint and a half for freezing. And again, make sure you fill correctly so you leave room for expansion during the freezing process. This is a small recipe, so if you don't want to preserve it, you don't have to. It's actually a, a beautiful amount for a nice um, family meal and I will be sharing with you how to throw together a delicious pho noodle soup and how I make mine. So thanks so much for coming along with me today, guys. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them for me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you next time. Have a fantastic day.